So, good morning. We are doing viral today. So. Can start with this. So, sure, you want to? It's kind of like a bird just says. Yeah, so you have something that, first off, you know, could fall into a couple of buckets. Could be a proliferating epidermoid cyst, not per particularly a proliferating pilar cyst. And then there are different reasons for <coughs> an epidermoid cyst to proliferate, a big one being papillomavirus infection. So if the lining of the cyst looks like a wart, then you've got a cystic papilloma, Veruca cyst um, can uh, form in hair follicles or in eccrine ducts and form a, a cystic mass. Is that very good. And the features of a wart are compact or basket weave keratin, vertical tiers of round perikeratosis, and coarse hypergranulosis in the dells. Coilocytes are these cells with the little shrunken raisin of a black crenated nucleus and a white vacuole surrounding that. Um, often in skin, rather than being black, it's more of a large gray nucleus. Um, in cervix, they require the um, crenated black shrunken nucleus. Okay. So, I see some coilocytes again, um, compact hyperkeratosis, round perikeratosis. So, I think we're in the some sort of veruca. And where do you think we might be? Probably acral skin. Probably acral skin. Okay. So this and could anything else? unique about this particular example? There's a lot of like eosinophilic inclusions. Lots of eosinophilic inclusions that are cytoplasmic yeah. and that on a pomo plantar surface yeah. in a lesion that might resemble an anthill would be what? Myrmesia. Myrmesia, correct, which means Anthill. Anthill. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's exactly right. So Mermesia refers to the clinical anthill like appearance of the deep burrowed lesions. Let's just get ourselves colored there. Okay, we're good. Very good. A lot of acanthosis. So, very acanthotic lesion, somewhat hyperkeratotic. Yes. The hyperkeratosis is somewhat compact. Are we sitting on a dermis or are we sitting on a highly vascular submucosa without bundled collagen? No, it's the later. Shockingly, <laughs> it's the second one of those. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this would be consistent with the condylomathil, um, acumenomathil? Yeah, so condyloma, um, and condyloma, as we said earlier, you often have large gray nuclei in skin, whereas in cervix you would expect a black <coughs> crenated raisin of a nucleus. Um, but you have vacuolization, you have round perikeratosis, you have a compact horn. The presence of coilocytes, <laughs> presence of compact horn and brown perikeratosis, bless you, are predictive of in situ <coughs> hybridization of papillomavirus in sed K like lesions of the genitalia as well. So you but definitely have coilocytic change with large gray coilocytes. Your horn 
basket it's weave? a compact horn so it's there's normal basket weave on the side and as you get into lesional horn it becomes quite compact with round to oval holes cut out of it like you've taken a tiny little punch and punched lots of little holes out of an otherwise compact horn it looks like a Flatwort. Like a Veruca plana or flatwort. Very good. This looks like a has like similar features to all the previous slides you looked at, like what like features. I saw in the other piece you had like little superficial blood vessels within it. And what do you think about the nuclei in this case? They're a little crowded down there. A little crowded, a little big. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have something that is certainly a verrucoid keratosis, but has shares features with large cell acanthoma in that it has quite large nuclei. A little bit of disorder, a little bit of budding. So verrucoid keratosis with atypia we commonly see in older patients. Um, we get just a little hint at the bottom of solar elastosis. If you have someone who baseline has some resting atypia from age and sun damage, and then you induce a proliferative um, uh, agent or whatever you want to call it, like papillomavirus. Now you have proliferating atypical epithelium, and it can grow into a squame. So papillomavirus introduced in resting baseline atypia, and now you have a proliferative stimulus in that atypical epithelium. So what do you do with a wart with atypia? Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Freeze it, shave it, whatever. Get rid of it. So I see the epidermis kind of falling off in clumps to form somewhat of a vesicle. So you have a vesicle, and is that vesicle forming primarily through a net-like reticular degeneration or a rounding up and floating off of ballooned cells? Ballooned cells. Yeah, again, shockingly, the second <coughs> one. Any other characteristics <coughs> to the nuclei of um, those balloon cells? There's margination. There's margination. I see them flattening off adjacent to one another, so there's molding and there's multinucleation. Mm -hmm. So with those three M's of margination of chromatin, where it forms a peripheral eggshell pattern, almost like orphan Annie eyes, right? Um, have you guys ever seen orphan Annie cartoons? Okay, so like orphan Annie eye nuclei. It's like a thyroid cancer, right? Yeah, actually, right which is typical for thyroid cancer, correct. But you also see a similar thing. We just give it a different name. We call it margination of chromatin. Um, in the herpetic world, um, where you have margination, multinucleation, and um, what did I miss? Molding, nuclear molding, thank you. Um, now, this particular vesicle does or doesn't have a little bit of leukocytic classic vasculitis at the it base? It does. It does. And is this, does it look like this was a great big broad grouping of vesicles or one isolated tiny little bump? One isolated one. It might even have resembled a dewdrop on a rose petal. So what might this be? Could be chicken pox yeah. or it could be shingles. So um, shingles tends to be more of a plaque-like lesion, often multiple vesicles together. Um, loves to hit the hair follicle with necrosis of the sebaceous gland. Um, this would be very good for varicella. Latin scholar friend of mine says it should be varicella, if you're saying Latin. 
everyone will think you're weird mm -hmm. if you say varicella, so we say varicella. Um, so, or chicken pox, or if you were my kids, chicken pops. <laughs> So there definitely is some reticular degeneration of the epidermis. Is it only reticular or is there also ballooning? So this one is undecided, right? Reticular degeneration goes more with pox, enterovirus. Ballooning definitely goes with herpetic, right? This has some elements of both, has lots of neutrophils. So how are you going to work your way through this undecided, largely necrotic example? So I don't really see much in the way of epithelial inclusions. I can make out that even though it's necrotic, we have large balloon cells that have multiple nuclei. And you can even make out some margination yeah, still, yeah. some peripheral chromatin. Yeah, so it's probably herpetic, um, probably at a late stage where the blister is necrotic. They often look white at that point. They look like a pustule clinically, but when you jab them, straw-colored fluid comes out. It's just that, that w the surface is so macerated because it's necrotic that it looks white. And this um, certainly could be zoster. Um, the history in that particular example was that it was HSV and just an older blister. Necrosis. Necrosis of what? A of a follicle. You see a little hair. Herpes. What loves to necrose follicles? Herpes. Herpes. Herpes and in particular zoster. Yes. Right. Zoster loves to necrose follicles, loves to se necrose sebaceous gland. Looks like we've got some more degeneration. It looks kind of net like. Um, yeah, net but like, there but there's also ballooning, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have a combination of net and ballooning, is it more likely enterovirus or more likely herpetic? Probably herpetic. More likely herpetic. If you see the balloon, you may see a combination, but if ballooning is present, that's pretty strong evidence for herpetic. Skin. And I see focus features. Yeah, and there's those like eosinophilic inclusions. So this is probably Spermisha. Yes, yeah, Spermisha. So you have what looks just like a wart everywhere else, and then focally you see the inclusion bodies of the Mermisha of warts coming up like the burrow of an anthill. There's definitely a cantholysis. Are the cells, cells normal or are they rounded up? Rounded up, like ballooning. We see in ballooning degeneration. Any of the multinucleated? Yes. Any with margination of chromatin? Yes. So what are you thinking? Herpes. Herpes. Mm -hmm. And what else is going on here? <coughs> Involvement of the hair follicle. Uh, 
so I see very atrophic epidermis with a lot of hyperkeratosis and a massive pink edematous zone and then a band like infiltrate at the base of that. Anyone want to jump in? Lichen sclerosis. So this is genital herpes superimposed on lichen sclerosis. It's a twofer. Starting to get trickier. So lots of acanth acanthotic lesion. Acanthotic lesion. So when I see acanthotic like that, I look down below. And it looks like it's on general skin. And it looks like it's probably on a certainly a highly vascular skin, right? right. So I'm thinking. Like Thinking condyloma, and the perikeratosis is round. It's pretty dark too, right? I guess there's some atypical cells. There are a lot of atypical cells. A lot of atypical cells crowding, high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. It's almost full thickness atypia. Like a bonoid papulosis. Like bonoid papulosis. So bonoid papulosis is just HPV induced Bowen's disease, right? Um, the term bonoid papulosis was coined at the AFIP at a time when if you had Bowen's disease on a male genital, you would simply excise it. And if you had Bowen's, Bowen's disease on a female genitalia, radical vulvectomy was performed. And the term bonoid papulosis was coined to stop people from doing radical vulvectomies in women who had warts with atypia. Um, but it is just the transitional stage of um, basically a wart becoming Bowen's disease, right? They're often multifocal. So the, the issue was people would have treatment and then you would have recurrence and recurrence and recurrence because it's multifocal, right? They were all warts and so it eventuated in recommendations for radical vulvectomy, um, which was maybe just a little bit overkill. <laughs> so the, the term, um, although it, you know, people were mystified by the term, it served its function, right? That it that this was, quote, not Bowen's disease. This was something else that needed to be treated, not with radical vulvectomy. So I'm scanning up a little bit. Looks almost like a subcoinal, like a blister. Some looks like a material. blister. It looks Imagine like there might be that. some multinucleated cells in there. Some multinucleated cells. And tell hmm. me about the chromatin pattern in those multinucleated some cells. Molding. There's molding and there's certainly margination, so you're thinking herpetic, uh, herpetic blister. Very good. Now, in the um, you guys did with the fellows, you did the um, the unknowns for the yep. week, so you saw smallpox in there and you saw enterovirus in there, so you had those for comparison as well. Let's see what we want to do here. I see papillomatosis, um, and that looks like reticular degeneration. Is it reticular degeneration, or is it lots of vacuolated cells with tiny little black raisins of nuclei in the center? Okay, it's the second one, coilocytes. So just massive coilocytosis, okay. right? In reticular degeneration, the cells are necrotic, so you the nucleus will be red. Remember, death is red in H and E. So when you go to the great beyond, expect red, right? Because <laughs> death equals red, at least in H and E sections. Here you still see not only nuclei, but they're jet black, right? So mm -hmm. that's just four plus coelocytosis in something that is becoming very, very 
papillomatous mm -hmm. and has sort of broad fist-like areas pushing down into the tissue. Looks like we're on very vascular skin again. So vascular oh. skin. So what would be a wart that becomes gigantic and starts to push down into the tissue in a fist-like plowing fashion? Um, Rucus. Uh, yep. You're carcinoma? Verrucous carcinoma, <laughs> correct. So Verrucous carcinoma or so-called <coughs> giant condyloma acuminata of Bushke and Lowenstein um, in the mouth. It's called oral florid papillomatosis. On the, um, on the sole of the foot, it's um, called um, carcinoma caniculatum. What does caniculatum mean? We had anthills early, earlier with mermetia. Caniculatum refers to rabbit warren. Rabbits live in single burrows, but the burrows are in a little community of burrows. So you've got a little cluster of holes in the ground. If you see carcinoma caniculatum, it's a plaque on the foot with draining sinus tracts in it, mm -hmm. um, like a rabbit worm. So all variants of HPV-induced cancer. And so this is, if I tested this with in situ hybridization, I'd find high-risk HPV, right? Mm -hmm. If I tested this with in situ oh, hybridization, no. I'd find <laughs> high risk HPV, right? No. No, wrong. Mm -hmm. I always get that wrong. Mm -hmm. um, high risk causes cervical cancer. Verrucous carcinoma comes from, quote, low risk types, HPV 6 and 11. Looks kind of like a seb structure. But with mm, a problem in the teeth here. And with some tears oh. of round perikeratosis and very prominent atypia throughout. And distinctly, the perikeratosis is round, right? Yeah. In Bowen's, your perikeratosis is usually flat, like big black bricks. Here it's distinctly round. So what kind of Bowens could have round perikeratosis? Mm, transform from uh, HPV infected. Yeah, so uh, papillomavirus-induced Bowens. So if you look at papillomavirus-induced Bowens, number one, it tends to be thighs, genitalia, lower abdomen. Um, number two, the cells tend to be quite small. So although you have hyperchromasia and a high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, and crowding, overall the cells are much smaller than they tend to be in sun-damaged bones. Um, you often have some cytoplasmic swelling and maybe even some coilocytes as you get to the surface, round perikeratosis, all features of a papillomavirus-induced bones disease. Okay. I think we have hit most of the highlights of what we need to do here. Let's do this one. What is this? Molluscum. Mm -hmm. oh, correct. So you have the um, scalloped border and the molluscum inclusions. And let's see. I think we're pretty good here. Let us do some potpourri. Oh, no, before we do that, let's do this one. First off, tell me about the stratum corneum. It's kind of like falling apart, but it is, or was basket weave. Yeah, so is it a normal basket weave or a very coarse basket weave? I guess coarse. It is a coarse basket weave of the type yeah. that you get in a flat wart. Yeah, right? and then there's hypergranulosis. There. And there's hypergranulosis. What else is there? What are all of those gray? Is this like EDV? That's epidermal dysplasia versus a change. So you have those blue 
um, steel blue foamy cytoplasm cells in the um, granulosum and just below in the upper stratum alpigi. And so that kind of blue cytoplasm goes with epidermal dysplasia verisiformis, which you can have acquired in conditions like HIV, or you can have inherited. When it's inherited, what's the inheritance? Usually recessive. And what's the outcome? Don't they usually get like lesions all over? Um, they get, they s present with what looks almost like tinea versicolor lesions on the chest and back. So is that such a bad thing? Um, I mean, it could be multiple things. Like it could be mistaken for tinea versicolor, so that could be a bad thing. It could be mistaken. And what's their <laughs> outcome by the time they're in their 20s? I think they develop squints. Yeah, exactly. And they often die by late 20s of metastatic squamous cell carcinoma. So their outcome is almost like a patient with xeroderma pigmentosum in terms of risk of cancer. So, um, and they only become cancerous in areas of light exposure. So um, with the ones on the trunk that are protected from light continue to look like tinea versicolor lesions. Mm -hmm and the ones that are exposed to light um, become aggressive squamous cell carcinomas. So there, I think you've seen at Kodachrome, or at least some of you have seen at Kodachrome, um, sweet little redhead boy with TV-like lesions on the trunk, and then he became kind of a rebellious teenager and ran away from home because his parents kept him inside and didn't let him go out and play with his friends and he became a roofer in Florida and returned home with widely metastatic squamous cell carcinoma in his 20s and just fungating masses everywhere. So pretty horrific disease if not protected from the sun. Okay, let's do just a few more examples to... Okay. This is <coughs> kind of like an endophytic lesion. Kind I of like an easy, I can. endophytic. You are the queen of the <laughs> lesion. <laughs> so you have the red inclusions in an endophytic wart on an acral surface. Very good. Thanks. <laughs> Best title ever. <laughs> At least you're royal. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like EDV, yeah. Looks like, so why does it look like EDV? Uh, coarse hyperkeratosis. Uh, so coarse vascular weave hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis. And the foamy blue cell, cells with the foamy blue cytoplasm. And cells with foamy blue cytoplasm. So that is indeed EDV. You just saved that patient from a horrific death. Well done. Degeneration. See a multinucleated. See Tell me about the chromatin pattern. It's marginated. Definitely marginated, right? Some sort of herpes virus. Some sort of herpes virus. You are correct. Chirpies. within the upper dermis. There are some bigger cells. I think it's, it's a hepatic change again. Start up with the corneum. Well, yeah, I'd say a little bit normal to a little bit coarse basket weave. Yeah, kind weave. of a coarse basket weave. And then there's a coarse hypergranulosis okay. irregularity in size of the granules. So that's a little warty, right? And then what's with these cells with all the ample bluish cytoplasm? Uh, EBV again. So E, D, E, V. Yeah. So not Epstein-Barr, but um, epidermal dysplasia versiformis. Very good. So 
I see a crust at the top of the lesion, or maybe necrosis. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an ulcer and crust. And then, what, what's that? I see some neutrophilic inflammation, and then the pink. Yeah, um, what did that used to be? Maybe a sebaceous gland. Yeah, sebaceous gland or hair follicle. You can even see a little hair there, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what would cause an ulcer and crust and necrose your follicle like that? Herpes. Yeah, exactly. Um, the one thing that we didn't see here that I think you did have a nice example of in your unknowns was Veruca Soster. And Veruca zoster is um, pretty much unique to HIV and other causes of immunosuppression. So you want to recognize that Veruca hyperplasia of the epidermis. Okay, how about this? So, so do you see cells that are acantholytic and ballooning, or is it predominantly reticular degeneration? Predominantly. And then what are these pink inclusions sitting in the cytoplasm? Um, so ORF? So something like ORF, it says with predominantly reticular, so reticular without inclusions, you'd think of enterovirus, things like hand, foot, and mouth, and reticular degeneration with prominent inclusions, you think of pox and parapox, and, you know, this certainly could be an ORF type of blister. This particular one, um, you had a um, mucopurulent discharge from the nose and then horrible fever and all at once um, eruption of umbilicated pustules that came all in the same phase of development and widely disseminated. Smallpox. Smallpox. Yes, we were just the victims of a biological warfare attack and that is indeed smallpox. So recognizing pox and parapox, um, important one for the low-level endemic parapox type of infections that we see, but also um, we were first line for identification of possibility of um, biological warfare attack. Okay, how about So <laughs> molluscum, in, in this case a molluscum cyst, and you have to recognize the molluscum inclusions within the cyst. Very good. You are the king of molluscum. <laughs> I believe you rule jointly with the queen <laughs> of Mermesia. <laughs> it's sort of like William and Mary. So it definitely has like coilocytic change. Definitely coilocytic like change. A yeah, like a flat wart. Doesn't really have the coarse corneum, but definitely has the hypergranulosis and the coilocytes all through this broad acanthotic lesion. So what would you call something that's sort of verrucous and broad and flat? Maybe like plana, mm -hmm. like verruca plana, mm -hmm. so flat work. Okay. And you've got a little bit of the coarse punched out corneum at the, at the edge. Okay, I think we did pretty well with that. Um, Bugs and worms were in this chapter. We're not going to spend a lot of time on bugs and worms, but we can do um, just very briefly. You know, if you get as far as recognizing that it's a worm, you've done pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> um, This is a worm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. You're done. <laughs> it looks, it looks like gravid uteri. So they're paired gravid uteri, right? So you know this is a worm. 
in which humans are the definitive host, mm -hmm. and your muscularis is almost non-existent. <coughs> so that's pretty good for onchocerciasis. And so this is a big convoluted onchocercoma, whereas in dirofilaria, it's a bachelor, so he's all pumped up and muscular, but there's no procreation going on. A worm, <laughs> and this worm has a ridge going down its side that looks like two basophilic thorns, one coming off of each side, and it's forming a little abscess in the appendix. So it's for pinworm, and that is indeed pinworm with those two thorns on the outside. Good. Yeah. <coughs> and then you, know, you sort of have inflammation, edema of tissue, and then something mm. sitting there that's insisted and multi-oculated. But when you look, and this is indeed sparganum proliferum, but uh, um, sister sarcosis would look very similar. You've got a secretory tegument instead of a cuticle. You've got subtegumental cells. You have wisps of smooth muscle instead of striated muscle, and it can't, it doesn't even have a gut, it has to calcify its waste internally, so you have these shaman like bodies that are calcareous bodies. Okay, I think we hit worms pretty well. Um, let's see, a couple of other buggish things that you should know. Almost like a tick or something, that, or a worm with stuff in it. It has like blood in. Yeah, in it's so it's got blood in it. So this is something blood sucking, right? Or a fly. Um, so something that is embedded in the skin, you know, burrowed in what looks like acral skin. Oh, tongiasis. Mm -hmm. And this is tongiasis. So. Um, tongiasis, you see all of these little red ovals in it, um, some of which are respiratory apparatus and then some of which are ova that you see and you see the blood-filled gut and the spikes with which it embeds itself in the tissue embedded in acral skin. Tongiasis um, is now all over um, the eastern seaboard. So, you know, it um, came from Africa, but is pretty much anywhere where you can, anywhere where you have warm beaches. I think this is scabies. Get scabies. So you got a mite and you have dorsal spines on the mite that you can make out. And so that's the female scabies mite. Um, the male um, sort of, um, he's not very reliable. He just sort of goes <laughs> burrow to burrow, spends a little short encounter with the female, and then goes on his way. But it doesn't end well for him. His health begins to decline, and he doesn't live long after that. Um, and she goes on to have progeny and prosper in her burrow. in there, so we have a dermal hypersensitivity response, 
and you don't see really much going on other than that here except this was on a dorsal foot where there was a serpiginous erythematous path and so that was um, cutaneous larva migrans this is another example where you're catching it in the bullous phase and occasionally you'll actually see the worm sort of up in the upper stratum alpigi. <coughs> you can also say malpigii. Oh, what's this? Looks, you know what a Christmas cactus looks like? This looks almost like a Christmas cactus with those segments. Okay, everyone's assignment is to look up Christmas cactus, not the flower, but the, the green part of a Christmas cactus, because it looks exactly like this, which is a tapeworm. And this particular tapeworm, um, the person presented with megaloblastic anemia, which is commonly goes with the fish tapeworm by Philopothra bottom. <coughs> Is that the type of flatworm? Type of flatworm. Okay. Yep. Says toad. It's like the one that's in Hong Kong. Or um, is that the one that's in China more? Uh, Nathostoma is more there and liver flukes. But um, you also, um, you know, you have fish tapeworm everywhere. It's usually freshwater fish. Um, so freshwater fish should not be eaten raw. Only saltwater fish should be eaten raw. And freshwater fish is used um, to make dumplings, make all sorts of things. Um, so um, in New York in the 20s, um, Jewish women got um, megaloblastic, uh, pernicious, or got pernicious anemia um, from vitamin B12 deficiency because they would taste the mix for the gefilte fish before they'd cook it, and so they'd get the tapeworm. Um, but you can see it in, in anyone who has undercooked freshwater fish. Okay, what kind of worm is this? Is it a schistus worm? With all of these polyfilaments tied into a knot. It's suture. Oh. Right, so just to recognize what polyfilament suture braided, like Vicryl, looks like in, in tissue. Okay, so I think we hit the bugs, the worms, reasonably well. What else do we need to hit? We need to hit this. This is the, and it starts with an M, mid, uh, midriasis. Midriasis has to do with your and eyes. That's your eyes. <laughs> mid, um, is it my eyes. My eyes. <laughs> which, according to Ron Corpini, is pronounced myasis. Apparently, either the Y or the I is silent. We don't know which. But it um, apparently is pronounced myasis, but everyone says myasis. So. Either way is fine. And you see all the little short CD hairs with which it embeds itself in the in the skin. So very good. And then we hit that pretty well. I'm trying to see if there are any um, Schistosomes, we did not see schistosomes here. Um, here's one other. This is what you get from ceviche. See the short, fat, kind of stubby worm that burrs its way through the tissue, producing urticarial lesions that migrate relatively slowly, not like larva currents.
that starts around your butt and goes out towards your abdomen or thigh and goes very rapidly in um, strongyloides. This is the slowly migrating nathostoma that you get from pickled fish. Okay, I think we're pretty good there. Um, so let's grab. Let's go to the unknowns really quickly and just make sure we hit all the highlights. So you should be able to do these rapid fire, right? Okay, so Rachel, you want to start us out? Um, this is a Veruca cyst. That is a Veruca cyst with a very dense keratin core. Okay. Let's do this one. This is a vesicle or a blister. It looks like ballooning degeneration. Is it predominantly blue no, ballooning or predominantly reticular? It's more reticular. And Very then the next question would be, do you see inclusion bodies? And in this case, we definitely yes. see some inclusion bodies. Let's see if we can get that. So we're in the pox or parapox. So we're in a pox or parapox. And this was another smallpox example. What was great pox? If smallpox was small, what was great pox? Big. Syphilis. Yeah, syphilis. Uh, okay. And there are um, periodic outbreaks of great pox still where you get pustular um, syphilids. Um, Le Moscow had about five years ago had a big outbreak. And then, of course, Manhattan shortly thereafter had an outbreak of, of great pox. Um, it seems like a wart. Like a wart with mm. lots Polycytes, of polycytes. Complex chromium, So, it's probably more like a flat wart, but just wart is, is really fine. Any kind of wart would be good. That is a scabies mite, <laughs> correct. And you have a hypersensitivity response down below. Let's see, eosinophils. Is it is a tick, which is the blood in the gutter? Yeah, it's got the pigmented mouth parts and a smooth outside, thick cuticle, blood filled. So that is an engorged tick. Pretty good. This looks like tongueiasis. That is tongueiasis. Very good. The only thing you didn't say was, don't waste my time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My myasis or myasis, whichever way you want to pronounce it, with the CD on the outside. <laughs> kind of busy dermis, lots of inflammation. Oval ova with stippled interior and an apical spine would be schistosomes. So schistosome ova causing an inflammatory reaction. So T 
deep to a big muscularis, we have this critter. Like a flatworm, big calcareous bodies, right? So big where it's calcifying its waist internally, smooth muscle only, secretory tegument, subtegumental cells. So flatworm. Microfilaria in lymphatics. looks like herpetic infection. like a herpetic infection and then we have this other tissue here where we have lots of necrotic keratinocytes out of proportion to lymphocytes so what might this person with a herpetic infection be experiencing interface dermatitis lots of dead reds out of proportion to lymphs acute stratum corneum yeah erythema multiforme associated with their mm. hepatic infection. Very good. So worm. <laughs> a worm, a convoluted worm. So you've probably done well enough, just saying worm. Non-gravid, thick muscularis, big inflammatory reaction suggesting this person, this person, this worm, <laughs> it, we, they're people too. Um, they're not adapted to living in humans, so this is dyro. Microfilaria again. Microfilaria again. Big, long, big microfilaria, which goes with Anthocerca. In the EM-associated herpes, is it common to see the herpes changes, like, within the biopsy of EM, or is that...? No. Oh. The, it's not common. It just, we just happen to in that particular oh. patient, which makes it a good trading club slide, right? Mm -hmm. If you're doing baseball cards, would you <coughs> rather have Joe DiMaggio or would you rather have herpes with EM in the same <laughs> <laughs> It's always the second one. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the second one, correct. All right, so there's acanthosis and yeah. um, I think this is a flat wart. And this is a flat wart. You have that coarse basket weave hypergranulosis or hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis, coilocytes. Hermesia. Very good. You even did that without any help from Hallie, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hermesia again. This one isn't particularly on acral skin, so, you know, when you see the same HPV1, people either do or don't call it Hermesia if it's not on a plantar, palma plantar surface. It doesn't really matter. It's a type 1 HPV. These like the chitin pigtails. Ah, uh, it's a little pigtails and scrolls. So this is what kind of scabies? Norwegian. Norwegian. They don't call it that in Norway. <laughs> um, so <laughs> crusted scabies is fine. If you want to offend Norwegians, you can call it Norwegian scabies. Yeah, verrucous. Oh, with scabies. Yeah, so <laughs> this is verruca or a very verrucous <laughs> lesion, kind of glassy verrucous, and they're actually focally you'll find some multinucleated cells in there. So this is verrucous zoster with scabies <laughs> in someone who almost certainly has underlying what? Uh, HIV. HIV.
Oh, that's a war. So, worm. Oh, and in this case, um, mm -hmm. gravid. Mm -hmm. um, thinner muscularis and probably Oncocerca, but you got to worm. That's pretty much good enough. Veruca's change. Round perikeratosis, big gray coilocytes. Not particularly a bundle dermis, it's fairly vascular tissue. So, condyloma. Probably condyloma. That's a ulceration. I'd say like look for herpes, maybe CMV by the endothelial cells. And look at the endothelial cells. And you definitely nailed it that what we're looking for is large endothelial cells with owl's eye nuclei. And let's see if we can find a really good one here. Well, we got some not so good ones, but you know, certainly large endothelial cells. And then the cell looks almost like here's some. There's a decent one in there. They look almost like the nuclei of CD30 positive um, lymphocytes with like a Hodgkin's nucleus with a prominent nucleus. Nucleolus. So that is cytomegalovirus, important to identify in the ulcer because you can identify before the patient becomes blind and treat the ocular disease. About this. Multiple eruptive keratoid canthomas. see within the nuclei of these multiple eruptive keratoid canthomas? Multinucleation. Multinucleation, nuclear molding. So this is not actually multiple <laughs> eruptive keratoid canthomas. This is what? Herpes. And um, what kind of herpes would look kind of like KA's follicular? Verrucus. Verrucus, zoster, which goes with? HIV. Yeah, immunosuppression, usually HIV. I think we're there. Okay. Well done. Thank you, Dr. Austin.